Hello, Everypony, Prince Elagorn of Aquilonia here, and today I am going to be reviewing the episode It Ain't Easy Being Breezies. This is probably going to be a short one. I'm almost tempted to actually forego a video review this week because, like with last week's video, there's not a lot to talk about here. But nah, we're going to give this a go anyway. What I liked. Fluttershy coming to the Breezy's rescue was a given, of course, but whenever I see her do something without hesitation and with total confidence, I always consider that a good thing. Also, Flutters is heart attack inducing cute when she blushes. The Breezy language is a little annoying, but there's something cute about the swearing. The airy fairy high pitched voice speaking that particular tongue and knowing that they're saying profane things is delicious for some reason. Seabreeze is a bit of a jerk, yes, but to me, he's the only one that speaks reason and is the only industrious one of the bunch. And I don't think he's entirely in the wrong. Also, as a Derpy and Doctor fan, I should hate it, but the Doctor with the 3D glasses trotting with Rose Luck is a very, very clever reference. Besides, the Doctor has traveled with two companions before, so I'd be okay with Lo Rose Luck working her way into the fan, and he just needs to be romantically involved with Derpy. That's it. Anything else that can be added to their lore is cool in my book. Fluttershy crying always distresses me, but she did the right thing kicking the breezies out. Oh, hey! Castle West Restoration reference. Awesome. Hardy wanting to be a griffin equals she had to have had a crush on Gilda when they were still friends. That's the only explanation I can come up with for that. It's a key episode. And lastly, the moral wasn't the strongest, but it was still okay. It sort of feels like the bat's moral, though, and that both feel like extensions of the putting your hoof down moral. In putting your hoof down, she learned to be assertive generally, so she wouldn't be walked on anymore. In Bats, she learned to be assertive towards her friends. Here, she learned that sometimes you have to be assertive not so much to protect yourself, but to protect others. Being firm is sometimes the kindest thing you can do, though it may not seem that way at first. But then I like... Well, it took an already terrible concept from G3, butterfly ponies, and turned them into Disney fairies. Except without the personality or go get itness of Tink and her friends. The opening sketch did nothing for me at all, so that's a wasted five minutes out the gate. Great way to start an episode there. This is another episode that ignores Spike's lesson in Power Ponies completely, and instead makes him a fuck-up, because hey, we can't have a story without a conflict, and we need a way to set up said conflict. And then he whines like a bitch about it. Dude, pony the fuck up! In fact, Seabreeze is the same voice actor as Vegeta is absolutely hilarious. But why is he talking like the Swedish chef in Sesame Street? I was waiting for him to go borga borga borg all episode. Hear that or make a It's Over 9000 reference. Neither one paid off. I also know from the comics that Flutters is a master knitter, but holy hell, how did she make sweaters that are breezy size? Lastly, the breezies themselves are pretty meh. For an episode that's more or less all about them, we don't learn much. Except they are lazy as hell and great at crocodile tears. Especially with their own families, given that they seem perfectly comfortable abandoning them and loafing off of Fluttershy for the rest of time. This episode... I don't know what to say about it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't that great either. It was just sort of middle of the road and really boring. It left me feeling very hollow inside. I think that's worse than if it were a bad episode. At least bad episodes provoke a response out of me. I'd rather be pissed off than left feeling as empty as this fairy fart left me. I'm giving it a three stars, but I'm also saying you aren't missing anything except Flutter's getting her key, if you skip this one. If you're a stickler for continuity, though, and the overarching plot, give it one watch and then forget about it. Until next time, bye. Hello.